Oh no, there's a masked lesbian shorty. We're all dating each other. Why wouldn't I date another masked person? Arm wrestling and kissing? Yes, please. We don't even need to hold hands. We can just kind of like matching carabiners. Uh, I'm not like full mask, guys. I'm just a tranny. I can't help it if I, I'm masculine. That's kind of the whole point. I like to be a little lady. Most of the time, like little, ooh. Okay, honestly, the, the Guitar Hero pants are not helping my case. I like to dip back and forth. I like to dip back and forth. Sometimes, femmes don't treat me like a little lady, but we're not gonna get into that because that is a whole can of worms that we don't want to know. Any mask, specifically those rugby players. Any rugby players, hit my line. I saw a video on here from a trans man about the things that they do and don't miss about being a woman. And I thought I'd do one from the trans femme perspective. So the things that I miss about being a guy, number one, it was just generally easier to style clothing. Like, oh, business casual, there is a set dress code for that. Casual, easy to get away with. You ever seen the pictures of Justin Bieber and Hailey Bieber? She's decked out, makeup done, got the high heels on and he's tagging along by like some sort of vagabond in his sweatpants and sweatshirt. We can't get away with that now. Like, yeah, I love dressing up and that's one of the greatest parts about being a woman in my opinion. I like, I love outfits. I love doing my makeup, but all the time it's a lot to be able to just throw on that sweatsuit and not give a shit and still be accepted in paparazzi photos. Kind of nice. Two is not feeling self-conscious when I'm ordering at a restaurant. Like, I love junk food. And I think as a man, it's like expected that, oh, I'm going to order the steak and fries. I'm going to get the burger. And you know, now that I'm a woman, I still do it. And I know that it's a societal expectation that I should be, you know, substituting the fries for a salad. And I don't want to cave into that, but the pressure is still there. Three, the bar is on the absolute floor when it comes to household care, personal care, gift giving, like you can do the bare minimum and still go above and beyond. Like instead of having to go the extra mile as a woman to do any of those things, you literally just need to take two steps and you're better than 90% of the male population. Four, 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 swimming. There is no preparation involved when you are a guy. You have a pair of board shorts and your friends wanna to go to the pool or the beach or something, great. Put on the board shorts and you're done. There's no shaving, there's no waxing. There is no prep work of any kind. You're not even having to worry about, oh, how do I look in this bathing suit? Because men don't give a shit. Rounding this out on a positive note, here are the things that I love about being a woman. Number one, women are just better and now you get to be friends with them. Yeah, you can be friends with women as a man, but the intimacy and the closeness is not the same as it is when you are a woman living in society with other women. On the opposite side of being able to dress frumpy all the time, I get to dress up. Like, how amazing. Instead of a generic box of clothing that you are and aren't allowed to wear and being judged for your perceived femininity if you're trying at all with your outfit, now I can go crazy. Like, I've always loved performances and the art of getting yourself ready, and now I can really lean into that, and that's just, like, incredible. Number three not hating myself. It's pretty great. I don't know if this one is like as applicable to cis women as it is to me as a trans woman, but there is such a restrictive box of masculinity placed on men that is really hard for, well, I shouldn't say is really hard. It was really hard for me to live in and work within those boundaries. And now like being released from those shackles, life is just a lot easier because I can kind of be myself a lot more. Go figure. All in all, being a woman has its ups and downs, but uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. Being trans is crazy because one second you're pre-T looking like a 12 year old boy and convinced that choosing to transition is basically taking a vow of celibacy. And so you name yourself Arthur. Because, you know, you're nerdy, and the rugged masculinity of a grandpa name speaks to you much like cargo shorts. It's unfashionable, but at least it's undeniably male. And then, a year or two in testosterone flashes before your eyes, and suddenly you're kinda hot, and you're stuck with this dumb, unsexy name. 
Like, you'd imagine what it would be like for your parents to call you Arthur, or the dental hygienist to call you Arthur, or the credit card spam mail to come addressed to Arthur. But you'd never thought about what it would be like to tell the hot stranger you're making out with at the club at 1am that your name is Arthur. Or to listen to guys really put in the effort and try to say Arthur in a sexy way when you're hooking up. And so sometimes you wonder, what if I hadn't given myself a name where the average age is uh, 73 years old? I don't think some of the people commenting on my previous video about the It Girl remix are understanding that I rock with the she-theys. AFAB, feminine, she-theys, masculine, AMAB, he-theys. I, I'm, you won't find me gatekeeping transness, I'm sorry. I refuse to other myself as a non-binary person who's medically transitioned as better than any non-binary person. Stop trying to drive a wedge between me and my community. I don't care how cis-passing you think a person might be. If someone says they're trans, it is not for anyone else to determine that but them. By gatekeeping transness, you are doing nothing but hurting trans people who don't fall into your neat little boxes of what you expect a trans person to be. Pronouns don't equal gender. Gender expression doesn't equal gender. Like I see the people in my comments who are like, oh, people like you are fine. You know, you've medically transitioned. You're one of the good ones. No, don't. I'm not, I'm not different. I'm not special. I'm not better. People who've medically transitioned aren't more trans. You cannot tell anything about a person, their gender, or their experience from what you can just see on a screen. If you're really gonna sit there, bitter, scrolling through your phone and determining in your brain who is and isn't trans enough for your standards, just block that person instead of harassing them. There's no point in it. And I don't know who needs to hear this, but you're trans enough and I love you. And being trans and autistic is a heady mix, is it not? You are autistic and you are about to start low dose masculinizing hormone therapy or full dose masculinizing hormone therapy. Let me, let me just give you my thoughts on some very specific things about transition that honestly are only becoming clear to me now that I'm several years into taking hormones regularly. The thing that I actually wanted to talk about was sensory stuff in relation to transition. It took a million years to decide that I was finally going to do it. I had reached a point where I was like, yep, whatever is going to happen, which will be all the things that happen when we take testosterone, even if you're taking finasteride like me, I was like, yep, if it happens, it happens. I'm ready to deal with whatever that is. And I know that it will probably be a little bit distressing when it starts because it's going to be different than what I was used to before. And there's absolutely no way to predict or soften that landing because it's simply going to be a different sensation in my body or on my body. And I'll just have to take it as it comes. And doing a low dose, I was able to kind of comfort myself by being like, look, the changes are gonna be slower than if I was taking a higher dose. And if I decide in those early months that it just feels like a bit too much for me, then I can stop and maybe some of those things will go back. The things that won't go back, there won't be a huge, huge change and I'll probably adapt to it and it'll, it'll all be okay. That was what I told myself. That is exactly what I did, right? I went on a low dose of testosterone for six months. I was like, wow, this is great. But it started feeling like some of those changes were happening really quickly. I was like, whoa, 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 I just need to pump the brakes. I wasn't doubting that I was doing what I needed to do. I wasn't second guessing that it felt really good to be doing testosterone, but I was like, these changes are happening really quickly. And the best way I could describe it was I feel overwhelmed. And so I was like, great, I'm just gonna pause. My doctor said that it was fine to do. That's what I'm gonna do. Took six months off and then I went back on my low dose of testosterone. I stayed on that low dose for about eight months and then I was like, yeah, rock and roll. Really needed that time of having a slower onset and that pause even in order to make sense of what was confusing me and overwhelming me so much. Necessary. Okay, I lost my train of thought a bit, but what I was trying to get to is saying that it was the physical sensory sensations that accompanied the changes happening in my body and to my body as it related to low dose testosterone that made me feel super overwhelmed. And even now, many years on, I still have ups and downs where I'm like, oh my God, it's all happening very quickly. Being autistic, I'm like hyper fixated and scrutinizing certain things about my body or my appearance where I'm like, is it changing? Is it changing? Is it changing? I'll feel like I have my finger on the pulse and then some days I'll wake up and I'll be like, wow, when, when did this happen? Even though really what's probably happening is that there are very gradual, small, slow changes happening. And then one day you wake up and like there's a cumulative effect to the point where you're like, oh, it's different. And if you're autistic like me, sometimes the oh, it's different feels very upsetting. And if it's your body that feels upsetting, let's just mm. I feel like I feel strong autism crossovers with all of these physical changes that happen, whether it's your body temperature changing, the way that you smell changing, the way that your clothes fit changing, the way that your voice feels in your body as you speak changing. And some of it's really nice. Like I love the way that my new lower voice feels in my body because it buzzes. 
there's a resonance. It just makes me so happy. Basically now, several years on, I try to triage myself when I'm in these moments of like, something doesn't feel good, ah. And instead of spiraling and going to chronically online discourse to discover if I am in fact actually just the worst trans person to ever exist on the face of the planet, I stop and I'm like, oh wait, <laughs> is this an autism thing? A lot of times the answer is yes. In short, I think I would say be kind to yourself above everything else. Don't forget that autism is part of the picture. Maybe that's like never a question for you, but it's always a question for me. I'm always like, oh, right, right. That's why it's hard. And let yourself be comfortable expanding and contracting in relation to what all the other needs in your body, mind, soul, and self are besides your gender identity because you're a whole beautiful mix of things. Okay, the end, bye. Trans people, here's something I want you to remember as we are now here early in 2024 and there's already been some horrible laws being proposed in some state houses across the United States. Every day that we choose to wake up, every day that we choose to be alive, and every day that we choose to be our true authentic selves in our lives, it is a middle finger to the people who want us gone from this earth. It is a fuck you to the people who do not want us to exist. It is a further pushing back of patriarchal expectations. So continue to be yourself, continue to know that as we exist and we are happy and we thrive, it pisses off people who just wanna hate for no reason. Keep being you and together, it's gonna to take time. This world's gonna become a better place. Why do you think he's so happy to see specifically trans? Because I'm gay. So just to be clear, I am a gay man, which means that I am a man attracted to men, but I can appreciate women while being a man. But both men and women, and the in-between, can be trans. And I can appreciate these, but I'm attracted to this. Are we clear? Good? I'm not weird, I just like seeing pretty people. A lot of, um, white... Two things. One, white people are so obsessed with reclaiming slurs, and I'm 100% sure it is because they just want their own n-word. I'm sorry, argue with your mom, but I am right. Like, I've seen so many of them excited about how many slurs they can reclaim, and it's just weird. It's weird. Secondly, non-binary people who present as their assigned gender at birth have different experiences to people, to trans people who don't. That's a fact. But you can have that conversation without invalidating the identities of these non-binary people. They are still trans. I think it's funny the first thing she brings up is white queer people because she is a white queer person and because of that she will never really understand the nuances of not falling into the gender binary. Speaking as a black person, we do not have the same relationship with gender as white people do. I have never had access to womanhood. I will never have access to manhood. But regardless of what I change about my body, there is a way I will be perceived by the outside world that is impossible to describe. And the fact that she says that gender isn't just how you identify, but it's how other people perceive you, shows that she is stuck in that white binary concept of gender. Because who's gonna look at me on the street and go, oh, I think their gender is a complex combination of being black and a lesbian and also experiencing the world differently because they're autistic. They're gonna look at me and think I'm either a man or a woman. Come on. The hardest parts of transitioning are some of the most necessary to grow into who you are. You need to allow yourself to be uncomfortable. You need to allow yourself to be scared. You need to allow yourself to be bad at things. Confronting these things is the only thing that is going to help you overcome them. If you play it safe, you won't get very far. Trying to get from being a shell of a person that only finds self-worth in how useful they are to other people, you're actually respecting yourself and wanting to be alive to see the future. That's a lot of work. You are figuring out who you are for the first time in your life. Your dysphoria isn't something that you should be trying to avoid. It is something that you should be trying to find ways to work with. Avoiding it doesn't fix what is causing the dysphoria. Like, yes, voice training can be dysphoria inducing, but you're not going to get past that if you don't voice train. Like, I'm not trying to be harsh. It's just how things are. Like, I started off down here. Do you think I didn't have voice dysphoria? I couldn't keep letting my fear and my dysphoria keep being in the way of who I needed to be. I am a bit over 15 months into my medical transition now, and I'm still working on so many things. 
if you are trans and just starting your transition, it is going to be hard, but it is so worth it to be the person that you feel you are inside. Hi, your friends don't hate you, it's just January. Everybody is depressed, self-isolating, and lonely, not because your life has suddenly gotten worse and everyone's decided to hate you, but because it is the middle of winter, I haven't seen the sun in several months, and it's colder than Loki's ass cheeks outside. Just thought I'd give a reminder, because I know all of us are kind of, um, in that little soggy, mushy state of being where all of us are considering that everyone in our lives has actually turned against us and actually has been resenting us forever and just haven't told us, it's just the new year. We're, we're gonna be okay. If you need someone to be soggy with, I've got a Twitch channel where we can all be sad together. Come, come hang out because you need some friends right now. I think we all do.